I was talking about the light at the end of the tunnel and how um, it's getting close to the end of the year. It's harder, it's getting harder and harder to capture the attention of your little ones. And so something that you can read aloud to them, a book or anything that you can do that really, really captures and engages them is gonna be a good thing, right? Because we're getting close to the end of the year. So I wanted to share with you Ooh, Di said they had a cyclone. Wow. She's in Australia and they had a cyclone today. Oh, I'm glad you're okay. Wow. I've never experienced a cyclone. We have a lot of tornadoes here though. Hi from Tokyo. Marilyn in Tokyo is watching. Okay, so here's the book. I don't want to keep you waiting. Um, it's The Tale of Peter Rabbit. And before I go any further, I just want to say this about old books like this, if, if you want to use the word old. Um, some things that are old may be of no value, and some things that are old may be of great value, right? So one of the things I was thinking about, um, something that's old that has great value, antiques, right? We know that antiques have great value. And some things that are old that don't have any value at all anymore are things like maybe outdated methodologies like corporal punishment. We know, now we know better, so we do better, right? So some things that are old have value, and I believe that stories like this one do. So it's over 100 years old, I believe, sometime, sometime around, right around 100, coming up on 100 years. And um, The Tale of Peter Rabbit was written by Beatrix Potter, and it is a timeless classic. This is a book that I enjoyed as a child, my mother enjoyed as a child, and all the kids in my classroom enjoy. Because the story is very relatable to the kids, it's about a naughty little bunny, right? Any character, if, you're, if you've been to this rodeo before of teaching little kids, you know that any character that's naughty is their favorite character, right? So think about the books they love the most. No David, that's their favorite. David is very, very naughty. Um, think about all the books that your kids love, and usually it's because there's a character in the story that's very, very relatable, because all kids can relate to being bad every now and again and not listening to their mother, like Peter in this story. And it's got adventure in it. He's running away from Mr. McGregor and he gets into all kinds of trouble. He's trying to hide the, Mr. McGregor's chasing him. And, and we know at the end there is um, a lesson in the story if you don't listen to your mother. And this is a story that kids love. So the cool thing about Peter Rabbit is it's a timeless, timeless classic and kids always love it. So. I, I like to have these, like I call them milestone read-alouds, and I just made that up, but these are books that I look forward to reading in the classroom because I get to introduce a new group of kids to these books each year, and I get really excited, like, oh, I'm going to read Peter Rabbit tomorrow. I can't wait. It's like opening a present on Christmas, right? You're just going to, you're going to be revealing this, this thing to them that hopefully um, they're going to be able to enjoy for the rest of their lives and even with their kids someday. So The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter is that one uh, book that read aloud that is going to captivate your kids. Now, um, some of you may be thinking, okay, some of the pages have a lot of words. That's okay. That's okay. The great thing about having a lot of words on the page is that um, there's a lot of great vocabulary in these stories. And if you remember the teaching tribe, you know that I used this book as an, our, our example in our vocabulary power hour last week because this book is packed with tier two vocabulary and uh, lots of really good vocabulary words in this book. As a matter of fact, the word I believe naughty is used in this story and that's kind of why I use it a lot myself because it's it's become second nature to me from hearing it all the time. So this is a classic that's going to captivate your kids. Of course, um, the kids love to act it out, like when Peter sneezes, when he gets, um, he get he hides under the flower pot, and then he gets wet, and then he sneezes, and you know, you go, ah, 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 
Choo! <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Mr. McGregor comes running after. This edition is illustrated by David McPhail. So this doesn't have the original illustrations. I think the original illustrations are beautiful. This version is beautiful, too. Um, there's lots of different versions out there. Um, another cool thing about this book is that now it's in the public domain because the um, copyright has expired on it after a certain uh, number of years. So, um, so it's readily available out there as an audiobook for free, um, the book itself, so things like that. Um, it's just a great tale. It, it captivates my kids, but you have to love it, right? We've talked about that before here on Facebook Live, how you have to love the story. You have to have, you bring the enthusiasm. You're the one who has to bring it, right? And sell it because we're selling what they're not buying. Now, this book is great. It's got all the ingredients of captivation in there, but you're going to be the delivery vehicle for that skill. So you really have to sell it. Um, so I'll read the mommy part, you know, the mommy bunny. Now, my dears, said Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mr. McGregor, <gasps> you know, and the kids just love it. So lots of words in there, uh, down the lane. And sometimes when I read the story, because if you've watched my nursery rhyme webinar, you know that I read nursery rhymes all year long. Some of my kids will be like, oh, that's like the little boy who lived down the lane. You know, or if they haven't, it would be a great time to introduce them to what a lane is. You could act it out. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Mischief? What kind of, what's mischief? That's a great opportunity to talk about mischief. And the minute you, you define what mischief is for them and they start using it in their everyday, uh, it's hilarious because the kids will go around and go, Mrs. Levin, he's getting into mischief over there. He's being naughty like Peter. <laughs> All of a sudden my kids sound like little British scholars. And they remember this book for a long time afterwards. It's perfectly appropriate. Um, and it talks about the garden. Obviously, he goes to Mr. McGregor's garden. So if you're doing a unit on plants and seeds and growing, this, I think, is the perfect story to go along with it. And another great thing about it, if you're in a public program and you can't talk about any holidays or anything, this is great. It's got a bunny in it, but it has absolutely nothing to do with any religious holiday. It's about spring. It's about plants and growing. It's a powerhouse. And you can find this book anywhere. It doesn't have to be this version. This is just a version that I had um, stocked away in my book stash here. Um, but there's many different versions of it. Sometimes the book will be very small because it's supposed to be like a nursery um, treasury or something. So be careful. Look at the dimensions of the book if you're going to buy it online uh, to make sure that it's big enough. Because if it's too small, because I had one one time that was too small to read loud and the kids couldn't see the pictures and that's never any fun. Uh, but because it's a public domain book, um, you can find the entire book online. And if you have a projector and a screen, you can actually show the book on the screen as well. So um, lots of great things to do with Peter Rabbit. So that is my number one spring read aloud that's going to captivate your kids and hold their attention. Hey, Laura from Costa Rica. And this book has been around forever and ever. So I wanted to share some activities with you as well. Um, so some of you may have seen, have you seen these? Um, now I think Target Dollar Spot I think tomorrow is the day. Uh, they're going to be stocking, restocking their, um, well, they call it the bullseye playground now. But every month they get new stuff they have to put out. And towards the end of the month is when they get the next month's stuff. So all that Easter stuff that we've been seeing over there soon will start to go away. But I got these little carrots in the Target bullseye playground or whatever they want to call it now. It'll always be the dollar spot to me, right? Um, they came in packs of four, so they were four for a dollar. So that's a little pricier, so I'd probably play this game a little differently. The tops of these carrots come off. They're erasers, if you don't 
know what they are. Um, they're little erasers and it, if you haven't seen my eraser addiction videos, you can go back and watch those in the archives, but I love my erasers. This top comes off and you don't want that to happen because it's a tiny little piece. So I super glue them all on. Um, so just super glue them all on. Um, I like to use E like elephant, E like elephant. Oh, that's backwards. <laughs> there we go. E like elephant 6,000. And you can get that at Walmart or any craft store and that will adhere the rubber in the eraser together. So what I, I do with these little erasers, there's a number of things I'm going to do. Um, the first one is uh, these will make a great sensory bin. So you could um, put something brown in your sensory bin and you could even use dirt if you wanted to. I was thinking of dyeing some rice brown or even using just um, brown rice, right? And then that would be the dirt and they could um, look for the carrots in there and we can make it into a little counting game or something. That's one idea. But I think the little plastic carrots, if you see, have you seen those? The little plastic ones that are kind of like carrot eggs, those would probably be best for the sensory bin, but that's one idea. This other idea, see if I can hold it up for you here. See that, that's a, um, ice cube tray, right, from the dollar store. And um, the kids can roll the dice and whatever they roll, that's the number of carrots that they can put into a hole in the ice cube tray. Do you see that? So now there's two, oh, there you go. There's two carrots in there. And every time they roll the dice, they can add more carrots. Now you would need a lot of carrots to play this game. So I might um, maybe have just a, um, like a, a paper five frame or a 10 frame in front of them, just because you, you can't have as many carrots as you need for this activity. Unless you spend a lot of money at the dollar spot and I wouldn't want you to do that. Another way to play it is just to put a, a bowl of the, the little carrots in the middle of the table and they can roll the dice and they take that many out and then they take turns and they roll it and um, put them back when they're done. That way you can have as many carrots as you like. So, Oh, thanks, Tom. I didn't give him the link to that, so he had to look that up. Oop. Hey, Keisha from Wisconsin. Um, do you usually read a book? Di asked this question. Do you usually read a book and have activities? Quite often I do. Sometimes the activities don't go with a specific book. Maybe they go with a theme. But sometimes there are some books that really lend themselves well to some activities. So the answer is sometimes. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I have here, um, so I created uh, a math packet with what well, Peter Rabbit themed math activities, but really these could be a garden theme as well. So that's why there's kind of like a garden picture there. Um, but they're all using elements, el vocabulary elements from the story of the tale of Peter Rabbit. So. Oh, and that showed up the right way, right? See, I'm so, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for allowing us to change the orientation on our Facebook Live videos. You've made so many people happy <laughs> um, so that we can now show text that's not backwards. Um, so inside this packet, um, Peter Rabbit math packet, we've got our traditional number game, board game, graphing patterns, counting books, uh, Play-Doh mats, a numeral game, sequencing cards, and a one to 10 puzzle. This one has a little bit more than most, but this is the Peter Rabbit counting book. And um, it comes, all of these come, most of them come, I shouldn't say all, uh, but they come in black and white and color. So that way you decide, whoop, somehow I just wrinkled the book. Um, you decide, you know, if you want to print it or not. Um, because I have instant ink, I don't have to worry about ink because I get 300 pages a month. And so, and it looks awesome. Um, so I have one gate. And the gate is one of the vocabulary words in the story. I see, or I'm sorry, it says, I see one gate. I see two carrots. And they can write the numbers in there. I see three beans. I see four radishes. I see five flower pots. And they can write the number in the blank there. And then they have this little book. So it comes in black and white and color. Um, and that's the counting book. And then we have the races game. And so this die is why I like to um, do this book because it lends itself really well to this game. Let me see if I can hold it up here. I'm glad that the screen is 
in landscape too so I can actually hold it up and you can see it do you see that so in this game here um, whoop, there we go Peter Rabbit is racing towards the gate he wants to get out of Mr. McGregor's garden right so this is a board game so what you would do is you would cut off a little bit of this here and then tape it together and then you'd have a board game and it's the four player board game so they would eat each child would have like a unifix cube or whatever you want um, they even had those little bunny erasers at the target dollar spot those would be perfect as as the counters for this game and the little bunny was wearing overalls they were so adorable um, and they could roll the dice and then move so the person who has um, let's say the green cube you don't have to have cubes that match the colors but they would move their their um, their rabbit or their cube or whatever towards the gate and so that's a four person board game Peter's trying to escape under the gate and so do you see how this this particular activity goes really well with the book so I liked that um, and then I always have individual um, board games as well for kids who aren't ready to play in a group yet so this is an individual board game and again you're helping Peter find his way out of the garden under the gate and so each child you could you know laminate this and each child in your small group could have their own board game if they're not ready to share and take turns yet <laughs> and they can roll the dice and then move their playing piece whether that's a unifix cube or one of those little um, rubber eraser bunnies towards the gate and um, that's a good one too and then graphing so the fancy word for graphing a fancy term is data collection right it's not graphing it's data collection <laughs> and you could do this a number of ways as well so there's um, I have little cards that go with this they're bigger and they go in the um, cube pocket cube or there's a printable cube if you prefer and they roll it and then they can mark in the column so let's say we just rolled green beans and we um, put it there and they can um, roll how many there's a dice too so um, you could put this in a page protector or you could laminate it and they could use counters and then there's a black and white version if you want them to use bingo daubers or crayons or whatever so it's data collection and there's instructions each of these has instructions as well it has learning objective materials and detailed instructions as well as educational rationale um, hey Carrie Lynn Yay! Where is that pocket cube from? Good question, Danielle. Tom should have a link for you. Um, I get them on Amazon. There's a number, they go by a number of different names. The one I found on Amazon today was actually the cheapest one I've ever seen. Um, there were four in a package and they were um, being sold as like baby building blocks, but they had places to put photos in and they're the exact same thing <laughs> and so they were $16 for four which I thought was a good deal um, so Tom will drop a link to those uh, cubes for you as well okay so those were just a few examples from the math packet <laughs> hey Danielle yeah the cubes are awesome um, they're soft I've been hit in the head with one many a time and I'm still here they're squishy um, and they have you know the pockets so you can put whatever you want in there so I get tons and tons of value out of these cubes I use them for all of my literacy and math packets um, use these there's also a printable version though if you don't want to buy these you don't have to you could use um, like a packing box a small packing box tissue box or whatever and just glue uh, take those on the outside all right um, are the kids ever ready to share or take turns? <laughs> I know, it's a very long process. I think sharing and taking turns might take longer for kids to learn than learning how to read. Honestly, I do. <laughs> I think they're reading long before they're ever ready to share and take turns. <laughs> um, yes, hey. Oh, wonderful, okay. Lori asked uh, if you have a flower shop dramatic play yes and Tom dropped a link for you there absolutely I also have a uh, I didn't think about it for this broadcast tonight but I also have a farm a farmers market garden stand 
that would absolutely go perfectly with this. I actually have a post at Pre-K Pages about how to make a pretend garden. So you can make a pretend Mr. McGregor's garden. Um, and then I also have the um, Peter Rabbit Literacy Activity Packet as well. And inside the Literacy Packet, we've got syllable games, beginning sound activity, rhyming activity, alphabet identification. Um, we've got our vocabulary cards, our word chart, read and write around the room activity, pocket chart sentences for concepts of print, an emergent reader, and there's in this particular one I added a little bit more into both of these packets because I love Peter Rabbit and I had more ideas than I normally do so I actually have a comprehension activity in there as well where they're um, selecting items that were and were not in the story. So in this one, um, the emergent reader in color, it comes in black and white as well. This is a carrot. This is a watering can. So it's a predictable pattern. This is, this is, and these are all elements from the story. This is Peter. Um, and they all have the end on the back as well. And then the syllable game. Now this one has a couple of parts to it. I'll make sure I get it right here. Now the syllable game has pictures, different pictures that you might see in the story. Let's see if I can get it here. There we go. Um, I just cut a few of them out, but they're on this page. You would cut them out. And so you can see we have jacket and gate, right? And this is a syllable activity. So they're going to select a card, right? And then they're going to, oh, I have two, I printed out two of these. Um, then they're going to roll a cube and I have these little cards. So you see that card there? They're all different movements and they roll a cube that has these movement cards in there. So that one was touching your toes. This one is raising your hands over your head. And now they're going to do the, the movements and the number. They're going to roll a cube with the numbers and the movements and do that for the syllables. So jacket, right? Jacket, jacket. Now, if kids say coat, I accept that because we do sometimes call it a jacket and we do sometimes call it a coat. If it's a coat and they say one syllable, hey, I'm cool. If it's jacket and they say two syllables, I'm cool with that too. <laughs> um, it, or you could say, Yes, we do call it a coat. In the story of Peter Rabbit, though, they called it his jacket, right? That's just how I would handle that. Um, so there's full directions in there as well. Let's see. I want to catch up on the comments real quick. Um, Marsha says, yes, the cube is awesome. <laughs> Nikki says, she knows adults who still don't know how to share. Uh, Lauren says, her 14-year-old proves daily. <laughs> <laughs> that kids don't know how to share yet. Yes, so there's always going to be some kids who are going to benefit from the individual board game, right? <laughs> um, and then I've got the um, beginning sound wheel, and there's a key down here. So you would print out one of these wheels for each child in your small group on cardstock, laminated, obviously. And um, they're going to look at the picture, right? This is a watering can. Wah. And then they would have clothes pins. So you would need clothes pins and you would use a fine point um, marker to write the all the different. So you would need a C, a G, a B, a W, an R, and an L. And you would write those letters on the ends of um, six clothes pins. And so then they would have to f figure out which clothes pin would clip to the watering can, the W. And so they love those. And then we've got our word cards, right? These You cut these out, you print on cardstock, laminate, cut them out, and put them in pocket charts. Um, or if you have, if you do a word wall, you could use them there as well. And these are all those same elements from the story. And it's always fun uh, because they talk about blackberries in the story. So if you had, um, you could talk about blackberries and do some kind of a snack with a blackberry if you can. 
And honestly, I don't know the difference between like blackberry, raspberry, blueberry. I mean, I know I know the difference in taste, but I don't know like where you get a blackberry. Do we sell those here in the States? I'm not even sure. <laughs> or is it one of those things where they call it a blackberry in the UK and we call it something else here? I'm not sure. Um, but I'm sure somebody will let me know. We have lots of UK uh, watchers from the UK here. So set me straight on exactly what a blackberry is. So I'm not, and it's not a phone. It's a good thing that, that it's not 10 years ago, right? Because when we tried to explain BlackBerry back then, it would have been something very different. Um, and then there is our word chart. This one comes in black and white as well, if you prefer to have those in black and white. And this is, there's directions for using all of this in the packet. And then we've got our, um, our pocket chart sentences. And so this would be for a pocket chart center. And these sentences match exactly the emergent reader. So if you're doing the emergent reader in small group, um, then the kids, when they go to the pocket chart center, they should know the um, picture cues and the sequence and the predictable text. And they can use fun pointers and sunglasses and uh, fun props to um, uh, use concepts of print to develop their concepts of print in the Pocket Chart Center. So those are just some of the things I printed out um, from the packet tonight. There's lots more in both of them. And like I said, I put a little more in this packet because I love Peter Rabbit. I mean, it's just, it's like that, that book that I just love to read aloud every single year. And um, was it, was it recently? I can't remember. Did they have the stuffed Peter at Kohl's recently, was it? I'm not sure, maybe I'm thinking of corduroy, um, but I, I'm addicted to Peter Rabbit. <laughs> All right, what else? Monique says, I love your preschool ideas. Thank you, Monique. Um, what kind of printer do you have? Good question, Lisa. Um, I have an HP, and Tom can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's a 5560. But I have a whole post about it at Pre-K Pages. So if, if Tom, you want to type in best printer at Pre-K Pages, you can pull that up for Lisa. Um, and I get the HP Instant Ink. So look at how cool it prints. I mean, seriously, I get 300 pages a month. I never have to worry about um, printing. But, but my problem is, is that because my entire adult life, since I've had a computer, I've had to be a miser with my ink. It's it's hard to remember that, oh, I have ink for weeks and months and years now. I don't need to worry about it. So it's always like, oh, I have to stop thinking that way. I can print this. <laughs> um, Peter Rabbit packets free, or is this a Teaching Tribe one? These are, if you're a Teaching Tribe member, you've already got access to these. I put these in the tribe last week. They're available for purchase on pre-K pages as well. So Tom will be dropping links to both the literacy and the math packet for you um, in the comments. Hey, Marsha. Measurement ideas for spring. That's a good idea, Marsha. I do, I am working on a measurement packet. It's, I'm not gonna promise that it's gonna be ready <laughs> or when it's gonna be ready, but it is on my list. But yes, it will be measurement throughout the year. Absolutely, good ideas. Um, oh, I missed a... I missed, eh, missed a comment. Um, hi, Laurel. You can buy blackberries in Wisconsin. I am just not sure I've ever had a blackberry. Blueberries, raspberries, yes, but blackberry, I'm not sure. It might be a cold climate thing. Lauren says, my six-year-old daughter is flipping out that you acknowledged my comment. Hi, Lauren's six-year-old daughter. <laughs> um, are those ideas in the teaching tribe? Um, oh, did I already answer that question? So she's talking. We have blackberries in Texas. We have blackberries in Texas. I probably won't like them. <laughs> That's what Tom came in to tell me. We have blackberries in Georgia. My in-laws take my kids to pick them in the summer, just like Peter Rabbit. How cool would that be? If you could take a trip to, I, I don't know if they're in season or anything, but if you could take a trip to pick blackberries, um, that would be super cool. And you could read Peter Rabbit. Oh my goodness. Um, oh yeah, Angel said they have blackberries at Kroger here in Texas. I guess I just never bought any. Are they like raspberries? They have those little crunchy things inside because I don't like those. Um, Lynette says we have blackberries here in Massachusetts. Okay. 
Thank you for filling me in on the blackberries. <laughs> yes, Roberta, these activities are in the teaching tribe. Absolutely. Go over to the vault and um, download those. You can download them right away. Um, so, <laughs> Di says, I'm obviously going to read Peter Rabbit. Oh, here's the one I was going to read. Jennifer says, my class loves syllable games during large group. We sing words are short, words are long. Say this word and clap or jump or bend or spin or nod along. I love it. That's great, Jennifer. Jennifer's full of really great ideas. Thank you so much. She is a very valued member of the teaching tribe. All right, guys, I think I've taken up enough of your time tonight. I want to thank you all for stopping by and um, make sure that you read uh, the Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter to your kids. It's that one read aloud that's going to captivate them at this difficult time of the school year, which is pretty much all year round, but it's great for spring. And if you want to learn more about how to teach better, save time, and live more, you might want to, if you're not already a member of the Teaching Tribe, to put your name on the waiting list. The Teaching Tribe is my premium membership site um, for teachers of preschool, pre-K, kindergarten, Head Start, and more. It's a place where they can download all the paid printables from pre-K pages at their fingertips 24-7, which is now an $810 value. And then we have our supportive community of new and veteran teachers, a safe haven for asking and answering questions. And then we have two trainings every month. Each one comes, online trainings, uh, each one comes with a certificate of attendance for one hour. And coming up on April 6th, we'll have um, Dr. Reggie Melrose over in the tribe for our office hours talking about um, dealing with stress and trauma in the classroom. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out. And as soon as we open to new members, if you're not already a member, uh, make sure your name is on that list and you'll be the first to know. So, and if you want to go back and watch this broadcast again, if you want to um, share it with any friends or family or whatever, one of my viewers told me a few weeks ago that the way she does that is she shares the video to her own timeline, to her own Facebook, you know, like I'm Vanessa Levin, if I shared it, on my Vanessa 11 page, then um, I could find it again really easily because um, Facebook doesn't make it easy to go back and find these videos afterwards. Sometimes I pin them at the top of my page and sometimes I don't. And so then they go away after a few days and then, then who knows where they go. So <laughs> I know how to find them as the page owner, but they're not so easily found, especially on mobile. So if you want to share it to your timeline, go for it. So that way you can tag friends, watch it later, whatever. Um, certainly not obligated to do that. Um, I will be back on Monday uh, at here on Facebook um, at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I hope that you all have a great rest of the week and uh, have a great weekend. And thanks a lot for stopping by and have fun reading Peter Rabbit with your kids. Bye.